Hello guys! If it's your first time here, welcome! My name is Anna and today we are gonna set up this February bullet journal layout together. This theme will be filled with interesting drawings, patterns, and of course some pages to clear your intentions and help you to navigate through the next month. So let's open our journals from the next empty page and I wanted to start everything from this whole spread wide cover layout. So my theme this month is mostly inspired by Masquerade Ball. It's definitely a bit different theme idea for me and a full 180 from the previous month's winter forest theme. But I happen to saw this picture on Pinterest that really sparked the idea for me. We've also done a lot of painting in the previous month, so this time I wanted to focus more on just drawing with my micron pens. And we are mostly gonna draw all the decorations directly to the notebook. So I wanted to start everything from this masquerade mask that's gonna cover most of this spread. I always start all my drawings with a pencil sketch, but I'm kind of speeding it through here since you'll see me drawing everything step by step with the black pen. If you want to create something similar at home, I thought the easiest way was to first create the outline and the overall shape for the mask. And then it's easier to start to add all the details on top. I got a lot of inspiration for different details by just looking through a lot of pictures of these kinds of masks. I didn't follow any specific one, but I just started to kind of combine different swirls and patterns and decorations that I thought looked good together. It was pretty difficult to keep everything exactly even on both sides. You can kind of use the dots as your guide, but the good point of a drawing like this is that there's so much going on that some small differences and crooked lines really blend together with the rest, so everything definitely doesn't have to be perfect. I think using different thickness for the lines made this picture look more dimensional and I actually touched up some of these lines after the coloring process as well. I list all the pens and tools I'm using in the description so you'll find everything from there. I didn't know what colors I wanted to use in this point so instead of starting that I decided to sketch the February title with a pencil first. I actually went all out with this title. It took me about one hour just to sketch, but I've been so inspired to try out these Victorian style letters after following Tia on Instagram. She creates these absolutely gorgeous bullet journal spreads and I've been just so inspired by the style of font she often uses, so I wanted to try it out myself. We'll focus more on the letters in a little bit, but now that I had a little bit better idea of how this page was gonna turn out, it was easier to start to imagine the colors. So I decided to go with some almost vintage looking colors. I was very inspired by those fancy ballrooms and so on. So I used these kind of dirty golden tones, then some grayish blue and even some maroonish brown. I used my watercolors for the coloring, but you could honestly switch it up with any technique you're comfortable with. I think the colors definitely took this drawing in a different direction than what I had anticipated. For some reason, these colors reminded me of some medieval fantasy style. I have no idea why. But as always, I'll add a digital version of this theme to my shop. And I think I'll add a black and white version as well. So you can color all these designs yourself. 
I think there were quite a lot of decorations this month that could be perfect for that purpose. They kind of reminded me of those adult coloring book designs. And by doing that, I think you could take all of these decorations in so many different directions. But yeah, after the coloring and adding all the final details to the line work, I moved on to finish the February title. I started by adding a quick wash of color to these as well. So after we add all the lines, these colors will kind of show through. And after just slapping on some color here, I started the line work for each of these letters individually. As I said, I used some different fonts as my inspiration for these and then just changed some details here and there. Again, working with different pens definitely helped to create some variation to the lines here. I basically wanted the main outlines to be thicker and then used thinner pen for all these small details and lines. So you could really change all of these details. I went with some swirls and diamond shapes. And even though this took quite a long time, it was somehow very relaxing to draw these. I think the end result also looked very nice, especially when all of these letters were done. I think this is still a little bit outside of maybe my style preference, but I always enjoy trying out new things and kind of expanding my skills and comfort zone. So that's why I wanted to try something different this month. Lastly, I added some lines to frame this title, but after that, this whole spread was done. I almost colored the background black. I think it would have looked really nice, but it takes a lot of time and I just didn't have the patience. So I just left everything like this, but maybe that's an idea that you would like to try out at home. But now that the cover is done, we can move on to the monthly calendar spread. I started with the bigger February title at the top and this time I chose to go with a little bit more comfortable style for me. If this isn't your first time here, you'll definitely see me using this cursive font before. But after that, we'll move on to create this kind of divider for the monthly calendar. I wanted to create at least one pretty pattern that would be more on the easier side. So I chose this black lace type pattern and we'll create it step by step. Using the dots as your guide will really help you to space everything out evenly. And also using a pretty thin pen will help you to keep all the lines more clean. But then you can see me just starting to add all these different elements one by one. It might be helpful to sketch a part of the design with a pencil beforehand so you get some practice before going in with the black pen. But otherwise, there's nothing that difficult in a pattern like this. It's just basically some circles and small swirl patterns over and over again. But after that, before we continue with the calendar, I was doing some jumping back and forth on this spread as well. So I kind of needed to know how much space the illustration on the right side will take. So I added the first pencil sketch here. And you can see me starting to outline this fancy, glamorous looking dress. Which was again really inspired by the whole masquerade ball vibe. I was kind of following this one specific dress illustration I found from Pinterest. I leave the creator to the screen so you can find her. But the main thing I wanted for this dress was to create a lot of details, patterns, and just add this glamorous effect to this page. And I know this is very different decoration for me. I've never drawn people or even anything close to it before on my blood journal. So I almost felt a little bit weird while drawing this. But at the same time, it was so much fun to come up with all these different details. I also don't have much experience drawing clothes. So I just kind of did my best with these folds. And later in the coloring phase, you'll also see everything much better and how I eventually added the outline of the person itself here. But in this point, what I wanted was to understand how much space we are working with here. So now I will jump back to the calendar and we'll finish it first. I created this dot outline for the calendar to kind of tie it to the lace pattern. And after that, I reached out to my foiled gold paint 
which I'm gonna use for the letters and the rest of the calendar details as well. I think these foil paints create such a beautiful effect when you turn the page around, especially this specific golden color, the shift is really intense. But of course, if you don't own a paint like this, it's not necessary at all. You could always go in with a same yellowish color we used in the cover spread, or you could use a gold pen or even some gold foil if you happen to have that at home. So just know that it's really not necessary to own all the same tools that what I'm using. But now that the calendar is done, we can finally jump back to the dress. I decided to color this with watercolors again, and I decided to follow the maroons and golden tones we already had going on. I also took a lot of inspiration here from the original picture and slowly started to deepen the colors and find these almost brownish tones for the shadowy parts. Also, I didn't want anything to be too smooth, so I created some texture by almost dotting the colors on, especially on the darker areas. I think there is a possibility to take this illustration even further if you happen to own some glitter or other type of sparkly paints at home. After I finished with the first layers of color, I started to define the details with the black pen, which really brought everything back to life again. I also drew some really simple outlines for the lady in this dress, and please don't pay attention to the body proportions, they are clearly completely off in this picture, but I didn't really care that much because I wanted the dress to be the main point here. I finished this dress by adding color to the lower part and then just deepening some of the shadows even further. It's sometimes a bit tricky to add this much color directly to your notebook paper. I was a little bit afraid that this is gonna bleed through to the other side, but gladly that didn't happen. It will cause the paper to wrinkle a little bit though. You can kind of see that when I will flip this page, but I think that's the price you have to pay if you want to have these kinds of drawings in your blood journal. Anyway, I finished everything by kind of adding this splash of grayish blue to the background just to add this color to this spread as well. And I also added it behind the title, which I kind of wish I didn't do. It didn't look as good as I imagined in my head. But anyway, that finally finishes our monthly spread. Again, very different style from my typical monthly themes. But anyway, it's now time to move on. So on this next spread, I wanted to start everything by creating these Victorian style patterns to the sides of the pages. I promise this looks a lot more complicated than it actually is when you take everything slowly and build your way up. Even if a pattern like this looks difficult, it doesn't really require any special drawing skills. It's more just time and patience to build all of this up. Anyway, I started everything with a pencil sketch. Once again, I had to go through a few different versions, trial and errors to get to this point. So also at home, don't be afraid to try out different things and also look for inspiration online. I think some helpful tips is to figure out the spacing beforehand so everything stays as symmetrical as possible. And then it's always easier to start from a bigger, looser shape and then kind of slowly start to figure out and fill everything in with the details. After the pencil sketch, I thought it's better to add the color first again. So when we define everything with the black pen, 
color is already kind of underneath it. And choosing the colors was really difficult for me. I didn't know if I wanted a darker background or if I wanted to focus more on just coloring the pattern. And I actually did end up liking this first color version that much. And I later will cover this with another pattern. But I still show quickly what I did here in case you like this pattern more than the one I chose to go with. So I kind of started with the background and added this grayish blue there. I think the main problem I had was that it was really difficult to keep this background smooth and the color ended up looking kind of splotchy and messy and that kind of took away from the pattern itself. But then I chose some of the same golden tones, some of the maroon and I ended up throwing in the gold paint as well. But yeah, after I was finished with this, it really wasn't what I was looking for. So I just decided to go with something else on the other side. Before moving on to that though, you can see me cutting a part of this next spread. So we'll have two spreads on this same page. I thought since these patterns take quite a lot of time to create, it's nice to at least enjoy them on these two spreads. But now I will show you the other coloring option that I decided to go with. So in this one, I wanted the pattern to have most of the color and I left the background completely white. I started with this darker blue and then I used a lot of my gold paint for all the swirls. I really like how the gold looked in this pattern. It looks so cool when you turn the page around. And again, I'm first laying out all the colors and then I'm going over everything with the black pen to redefine the pattern itself. I felt like I needed a little bit darker lines in some point, so I just kind of went over the lines a few times. It just created a little bit darker look and I think it definitely helped to bring out the pattern a lot more. Other than that, it's just a lot of repetition, so drawing the same thing over and over again. I only went with these three colors, so I think this version is actually much easier to create. I think leaving the background white will make everything so much easier because there are so many details in this pattern that coloring the background in any way will take so much time. You could of course use a colored paper to draw this pattern on, but if you decide to do this directly onto the notebook, I think leaving the background white will be the easiest solution. So I drew the same thing on a separate piece of paper and just glued it over the first pattern. I think this is a really easy technique to hide any mistakes and it's something that you won't even notice so much in the final page. But yeah, now that we have these nice frames on the pages, now it's time to finally jump into the content of these pages itself. So I wanted this first spread to be some kind of a self-reflection type of page. I wanted to create this black and gold title to really bring some darker element to these pages. And I think this spread is mainly inspired by Stoic philosophy. I've been reading the Daily Stoic since the start of this year. I think some of you might be familiar with this book. And I wanted these questions to be something that really makes you think a little bit more deeply. So after finishing this fancy title here at the top, I kind of separated this page into these four sections and each of them will have their own question. So I started from what I can control and what I can't control. In Stoic philosophy, there is actually a pretty straightforward answer to this question, which is that we can only control our mind. So we only have control over our choices and our actions. But I thought that's an idea that's maybe nice to open a little bit. And I thought maybe this is a concept that many of you might find helpful as well. Then on the next page, I wrote who I want to be. And then lastly, what's holding me back? So yeah, very deep questions that will definitely make you think. 
but the next page will be a little bit more straightforward here i of course wanted to focus on some monthly planning i created a very similar title using the gold paint and then this black tombow fudenosuke pen for the background it definitely took some time to go over these letters with the black pen but I thought the end result was really pretty and somehow went together nicely with the pattern. But in this monthly planning spread, I wanted to start from my monthly expectations. And I've noticed that after doing this for a while now, my monthly expectations tend to be much lower than they were in the beginning. Because one month, after all, is not that much time to get anything done. I also wanted to list my main priorities for this month. But then on the other side of this page, I just divided the space into these four sections that will be for the weeks on February. This year, the February is such a perfect month. Every week is exactly from Monday to Sunday, which is like the dream for a bullet journalist. But yeah, after that, this two spread layout is done and we can move on and start setting up the weekly layout of February. So I kind of wanted to continue that gold and black title thing. So I started here on the left side with these big gold letters. We'll actually also turn this page into a Dutch door layout. So I can really take my time with these letters because I know that I don't have to set them up every week this month. I think I often talk about this, but I'm just the worst at setting weekly spreads throughout the month. Most often I just want to have some easy layouts ready to go. So I've been loving these Dutch door layouts that really allows you to have very easy and fast weekly spreads to set up. But at the same time, it's still allows you to create something prettier to decide that you can still have a very visually pleasing weekly setup. And I personally chose to combine the weekend again just so I can have a little bit more space for each day here but you could also divide this whole spread into seven sections to have all the days on their own. After that, you can see me cutting the excess part off from the rest of the weekly pages. And I decided to go with a very basic weekly layout this time. I'll use the left side for all the daily to-do lists. And then I divided the right side into these three sections. I ended up writing the titles for these sections to the last page. So it kind of saved some space here. You could of course create some kind of decoration to the last spread as well. So anyways, at the top, I'll have this daily sleep graph where I can mark how many hours I slept. Then in the middle, I have my meal tracker. So I would just write down the lunch and dinner for each day. And then in the bottom, I just left some empty space here in case I need it for any random thoughts or notes. But yeah, that's it for this super simple weekly layout. I think the different colored diamonds were a nice touch to these pages. But anyway, it's finally time to start to set up the last spread for this whole layout, which will of course be the monthly review spread. I was figuring out ways to somehow tie this spread to the rest of the monthly layout. And I decided to reuse this black lace pattern but this time you can see me just making it a little bit bigger. And we're also gonna add these hanging jewelry type things to make it stand out even more. So on the smaller version, I used only one dot spacing for this pattern. But this time I just multiplied the pattern to every direction. So now we have two dot spacing for all the small decorations. I didn't want these hanging things to be too symmetrical. So I was just drawing them freehand here, leaving a little bit more space to the middle where the title will be. And then I connected this to the next page where I continued with the same pattern. But after this lace pattern was done, I started with the title and I used the same technique with the gold paint. 
I thought a black title wouldn't stand out enough from all the black decorations. And after that, I just added some questions here that will help me to review the past month. I always fill these pages in the very end of the month and use these to collect my thoughts before moving on to the next month and setting the next monthly goals or whatever. I started this next page by drawing this small graph thing. The middle line is kind of the zero point and then I will just rate the past month according to these five different categories. And I think this is just a very interesting and effective way to combine a lot of information in this small space. Then as our last decoration, I wanted to create just one more of these masquerade masks. But this one will be much more simple than the first one. I just felt like I needed something to this spread to really bring this whole theme together. So I just started by drawing the outlines very quickly. I added just a touch of color and then a little bit of that gold paint. And then I decided to color this one fully black. So there is no need to come up with any new patterns or decorations in this point. But after that's done, it finally finishes up this February masquerade inspired monthly theme. I think this was definitely one of the most different themes I've ever created. The pages were a little bit hit and miss for me, but there were also so many things that were just super fun to draw, which I think is always the most important thing. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to stay tuned for more journaling and art stuff like this. But I think that's all for this time. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really hope you like this theme and got some new ideas from it. I hope all of you are having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.